Hi everybody, it's Emily from DIYM. So today is the big cake box reveal. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. Let's get into it. So I'm basically gonna turn these stackable round nesting boxes into cool cakes and a bonus brownie box, so stay tuned. So as you can see, I made a ton of cake boxes. I made like about 10 or so. It doesn't look like that many, mainly because I did the wedding cake and they're sort of stacked boxes. So it's like three boxes in one. You can do whatever you want to. I kind of like how these cake boxes are so versatile. You can decorate it however you want. Whoever your recipient is, you can make them look realistic. You know, some of them could look classy, really cute. Some of them, I know the channel, the pink channel, she likes to do a lot of more retro fake food stuff. I don't think she's done any boxes on her channel as far as I know. I think a lot of her stuff is decor, but I got a lot of tips and tricks from that channel. I also watched a few other channels. I think her name is Deva Devada Lane. Devada Lane. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name, but she does really, really great food art as well. I think her and the pink tree are friends in real life, as far as I know. And so I've obviously got some tips also from, I think the box idea came from a video from Veruska Walker. And again, hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Sorry if that's not how you pronounce your name. She did cake boxes in her shoe cake videos that she was doing. She was doing like a whole bunch of shoes, kind of like the shoe bakery. And I sort of stumbled across that because I find the shoe bakery really fascinating. But she just did these really cool boxes and she kind of did like a tiny portion of the segment on it. And I was like, I really want to expand on that. I think that that would be really, really cool to do. As you know, my channel's about DIY gifting or making things useful or DIY organization and I thought that the really really cute decor also something that's great to present a gift in and it doesn't have to be just birthday stuff as I've said before in the past videos that I've been doing with the series I've been saying that you can do stuff for Christmas Halloween Valentine's Day all that sort of stuff it's really really fun to make once you start going I was a little bit afraid at first trying to do this project mainly because I have not really had a lot of good luck making actual cakes in real life I guess I forget to do the crumb coat I just just sort of slap on the icing and sometimes the crumbs get mixed in there and then I forgot to do another coat because sometimes I just want to like make it and eat it. I'm not very patient when it comes to making actual food because sometimes I just want to eat the thing that I'm making. I don't know if you guys have the same problem. Yeah so I've been really hungry trying to <laughs> make these cakes obviously but no like honestly they look really good. I really really like how they turned out. My husband's getting really hungry just looking at them. We've been buying more snacks than normal <laughs> so that's kind of funny. But honestly once I got going Going, and once I kind of got the hang of it, they were actually really fun to do. And if you create texture on them, then I find they look really real. They look really fun. I feel like some of them turned out better than I was thinking. And honestly, I feel like maybe I can tackle making a real cake again. I don't know. I got a little bit more confidence, but I was basically doing the boxes for like about three days straight. But anyways, I'm going to stop rambling because this is going to be a long video. On to the DIY. So I've purchased a few little round boxes from Amazon. I was trying to make them from scratch like I did on my channel earlier, but I wanted to make quite a few in different sizes and I was running out of time, honestly, to do this on the sides. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna purchase this. They're like 15 bucks. They're nested round boxes. They're basically inside each other like this. So they've got quite a few different sizes as you can see here. There's five in these things. I'm going to try to link them down below. Also, as you notice, I covered my table with some press and seal. I've never actually used it until now, but it doesn't leave like a sticky residue or anything like that if you've never tried it. I think I got the idea from Jennifer McGuire on YouTube and she's a really amazing crafter. I think she said that her husband actually invented the press and seal. Multi-purpose sealing wrap. So I think it's really great. It actually says on here something about, yeah, so you can use it for crafting. 
it's a really great thing for obviously protecting your food and all that. But yeah, it will cling to lots of different surfaces, but it's great for crafting. So that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this as a really handy drop cloth. And as I said, it sort of sticks to the table, so it might be a little wrinkly or whatever, but I overlapped them a little bit. So hopefully the paint or spackle that I'm going to be using on this won't seep anywhere. So I'll show you this really, really quickly. So what I want to do first is my mechanical pencil. I'm just going to trace like a line. While this thing is closed, I'm going to trace a line around the box. So if you don't want to make the boxes like I did on my channel, if you want to, that's cool too, because like that's a great way of recycling a lot of your boxes. But if you don't want to make them, these are pretty good. I think I got them for like 15 bucks for like the five of them on Amazon Prime. So basically now we've got like a line here all the way around the box. Okay, I'm going to do this on all of the boxes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some green painter's tape. You can use any kind of low tack tape for this. I'm basically just going to try to follow the line as much as I can and yeah it's just going to tape that off. So I'm not going to do this to the lid but I'm going to do this to the base of the box. I'm just going to rip it right here. You can cut it, rip it, whatever you want to do. Basically I'm going to have like a nice even line all the way around. Okay so I'm going to basically do that with all the boxes. So I got some lightweight spackle and I got a couple little ones. I have some big ones as well of the same sort of brand but in case I run out of this for spackling some stuff I've got lots left over. So this is kind of what's recommended is like a lightweight spackle. So there's that and then I'm also going to use some Liquitex white acrylic and if I want to make a chocolate cake I'm going to use like a burnt umber. I'm going to try to mix it in here. There's other methods I think you can use but most people tend to mix this in because it looks a little more like icing and this sort of just brightens things up makes things a little whiter. Okay so I'm going to use these guys. I got a whole bunch of this and I have the regular palette knife but I have all sorts of different tools that I bought on Amazon and these look like they might be cake tools but I think they're just for resin for spreading things whatever you really want to use them for but I have some silicone ones here too. You can use stuff that is for baking or not, depending, but I think this is a kit specifically for resin. So there's that. And also I have some bowls too for mixing. So let's see what we're working with here. Let's try to do white to get this going. Okay, so my husband opened this. He had to get a screwdriver in order to open these here. They're a bit dry. Apparently, whatever you're mixing with, you need to add a little bit of water to it. So I grabbed some water. So we'll see if this helps. I probably should take a plate here. That's yeah, pretty dry from what I can see. But I think lightweight spackle is kind of the key. Just gonna pour just a teeny bit in here. And you don't have to add a bright white. I've seen certain people online dyeing things with just like a hint of another color. You can make rainbow cakes, I'm sure, that way. Uh, the pink tree, I think she dyes hers with a little bit of a cream color. You may want to go to her channel for her directions on what she uses for her colors and stuff to make almost like antique white looking icings. I'm going to add some white though, some titanium white to this. I'm going to make the white one first. <laughs> and I think you can add, if you want to make almost like a ice cream texture, if you're doing like fake ice cream, I think you can add flour. There's ways of making it have a little bit more texture. I'm just going to add a little bit more water. I don't want to oversaturate it, but I also want it to be mixable. Okay, this is getting a bit smoother now. See if you're doing like piping icing, you might want to make it a little bit more pliable than this. So I would just say add as much either water or paint as you can, just little by little. Whoops, that might have been too much, I don't know. But little by little so that it becomes like a smoother texture and it's a little easier to apply. Okay, so let's try one of these cakes out that I've taped up. Let's try a big one. And I guess if I feel like it, I can paint it up later. surface is a bit smooth. Maybe the boxes I made earlier might be a little bit easier to stick on to something like this. It's very crumbly. Maybe I need to add some more water to it and then mix up a little bit more. I'm gonna add some white paint. 
very trial and error, this thing. Okay, maybe that's gonna be a little bit better. Let's try this again. Definitely almost like a whipped cream cheese consistency. It's a little bit more like that, and I find it very difficult to stick on. I feel like you need a little more texture on your cardboard sometimes in order to make things like this stick a little bit better. Wow, this just keeps sliding off. I don't know if that's a problem that anybody else has had with doing this sort of thing. Definitely a weird consistency. And different feel. It doesn't feel like icing, honestly. Maybe it's the brand that I'm using. Maybe there's a better brand out there. It does feel very, very lightweight, so that's a good thing. I try not to pile up too much around the tape because I want to be able to take the tape off while it's still wet and have it come off fairly clean. Maybe if you want like a smooth cake look, you can dip your spatula thing in some water and just sort of smooth it out. Oops, try not to take some of it away. That can happen, as you can see here, but try to gently do that if you can. Try to leave the bottom fairly clean if you can. And you can even get a piping bag and pipe around it and make like really cool effects with this. Again, you might have to mix a lot of paint in there to get more of a softer effect. Softer, but still stiff effect, I guess, because you want to keep some shapes and texture and stuff in some of your work, right? You want to make sure that it looks like icing. If you want to as well, you could probably smooth it down by sanding things afterwards, but it might give a different effect that maybe you're not going for. I don't know. I haven't done this before, so I'm just assuming that sanding might also clean things up if you want it to be a smoother kind of look. Okay, so I'm a little nervous about taking this tape off, but let's try to see if I can get a clean line doing this. It's probably best to take it off while it's still wet. It maybe fix up some of the whoops areas that peel off that look like it needs to be following the line a bit. And you could probably even do this with some sort of air dry clay as well if you want to create a smoother texture. Honestly, it's not even sticking to my hand. Probably shouldn't be playing with my hand too much, but I don't think it's that big of a deal if I get it on my hands. I'm sure people get it on their hands all the time. Just want to keep a consistent line so that the box lid's able to come down on this box. And if you're afraid of any of the craft paper showing, if you got some craft boxes, you can always paint around this area, maybe like a white or brown, depending on what you are making, like if you're making like a chocolate cake or not, that could definitely clean things up quite a bit too. And if you wanted to like add some sprinkles or things like that into the icing, now may be the time to do it. Or you could just let this dry and then do some piping around the bottom and you can definitely Definitely maybe put some sprinkles in or fake candies. But anyways, I'm gonna just leave that and I might do a little bit of a sanding when it's dry. So that's pretty much done for now. I've cleaned the bottom of the box fairly well. As I went, I might end up doing the lid here now. I'm just gonna glob it on this lid and then around the sides as well. It's actually a pretty easy cleanup with this sort of thing, surprisingly. So I'm gonna smooth out the top first before I get the sides. But yeah, it seems like a little goes a long way. This is actually the biggest box that I'm using. And I haven't really made new fresh stuff yet. And let's try to do the sides. I'm sure professional bakers are just like, what is she doing? So the lid might take a while to do, depending on if you want it to look really aesthetically pleasing or if you want it to have a homemade textured feel, like a rustic looking cake. There's so many things you can do with your cakes for sure. I'm just trying to do thin coats so that the lid will be able to go in a box no problem. I don't want to have any stuff hanging off the edge as much as possible with that. I'm just gonna try to clean that as much as I can as I go. Sometimes you have to have a very light touch in order to do this stuff. It's so easy to just sort of do something that makes a big chunk of it pop off like that. I might just take a little bit with my hands and just sort of smooth it out that way because it doesn't stick to my hands as much and it's a little easier to spread. 
spread it out. Yeah, I'm finding it easier to smoosh on with my hands a little bit and cleaning up the edges a bit with like this, and then just smoothing it down with my fingers. If you are afraid of touching this stuff, maybe wear some gloves. I don't know if this is toxic. I probably shouldn't be doing what I'm doing with my hands, but I'm definitely gonna wash my hands like crazy when I'm done. I always say take some safety precautions, like don't do what I'm doing right now in this video. And if I feel like I missed this spot, I might be able to paint over it again with a titanium white or something as well before I move on to embellishing it with other things. But anyways, that's the base coat. And that actually might be the final part. And then I'm going to probably pipe some stuff on here just to make it look a little more like a cake. Okay, so I'm going to set that to dry and I'm going to probably just try to do a bunch more. Maybe make a couple of chocolate ones in there. I'm going to try a different technique on this one. This is a smaller box lid. I just freshly covered it. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a fork, just a plastic fork. This could be from a takeout thing you had if you want to recycle stuff or you can get bags of forks. But I'm just going to get a regular plastic fork dunk it in the water and just create some fun textured lines and you can go over this a few times with varying lines go between the lines to create more texture and yeah if you even have a special baking spatula or something or palette knife you can create texture that way as well but that can give you a different look on the side so obviously i'm going to go over the side of this box as well I'm gonna give it a little more between the lines. But this can give it a really cool rustic look too. But yeah, so that is going to look really, really cool in the end. That's kind of like a different sort of texture. You can even press some things in if you want to a little bit. So that can add some really cool texture to your cake. So some of you guys probably remember me making the sprinkle video a little while ago. I'm gonna post it probably down below in the description. I'm just gonna mix this sprinkle mixture that I made. It kind of looks like party sprinkles and you can use whatever sprinkles you want. It doesn't have to be the ones that you made. It can be ones that you bought in the store. I also have another video about that. I might just post the link to the playlist of these cake videos and then maybe the individual video sample if I can as well. But so yeah, so basically I make a little sprinkle mix. You can use whatever colors you want and I'm just going to, while this is still wet, if you don't want to paint this and just want to let it air dry, I'm just going to put this stuff on top. Put as many as you want, make it look like confetti, try to get as many areas as possible. Sprinkle it on, then press the sprinkles in very gently because so you don't want to have a lot of fingerprints showing. Get around the edges too if you want to. But just keep pressing it into the spackle mixture while it's still wet. If you want to, you can glue on some pieces afterwards too, but it's just easy enough to do while it's still wet to do something like this. And it covers up some of your fingerprints too. <laughs> It's always a good thing. This area doesn't look too great. It needs a little extra sprinkles. But yeah, you can individually put them on too if you want to, like that. I just find it's faster to just sprinkle everything on, like make a mixture if you haven't already done that, and just sprinkle it on. Some of it might stick to your hand a little bit, but that's okay. It just looks like a confetti explosion, which is pretty cool. In case you made a candy cake topper like I made, this is a great time to put that on. Then you can put some sprinkles around it if you want to, or decorate it in other ways. I'm gonna try to keep some of these sprinkles aside and then I might pipe some little dollops on top and then put something else maybe either the sprinkles on here or something else maybe some other candies and you can sort of dump it like that and see what sticks but that's basically the top of this cake so these guys are dry now I'm probably gonna do light sanding on some of these maybe not this one but just at least the top and maybe the size on the one that's smoother but not the textured ones so this is like the next day after doing a whole bunch of white bow cakes or cake boxes whatever you want to call them and they seem like they're pretty good they're not too flaky or anything like that which is awesome so today we're going to try to make some chocolate ones trying things for the first time so this is probably gonna be a little easier to stir things up I assume if I put it in this kind of container so I was like I'm gonna do the white ones first and then maybe get like a whole container to do chocolate so let's try to get like a bunch of that out and then I'll put this aside for now and I'll take some stuff out at my leisure and I think I'm just gonna pour some water just a bit in there 
there. Try to break things up and stir it around a bit. And then I'm gonna add some brown to make it more chocolatey. I've had Phil's decorating cakes before, so I was afraid that this was not going to work out for me. I've had icing that's way too watery and stuff like that. So I'm trying not to water this down too much because I don't want a spackle that's too runny. That's the last thing I want. Mmm, it's looking pretty chocolatey, eh? Like almost like a nice marbly color. So I've been told from other YouTubers that it darkens as it dries when you color the spackle. I'm not sure if it's the specific brand that they're talking about though, so I'm not sure if this is going to turn out like that or not. Oh, this looks like it's mixing a little bit better now that I added some more water. Okay, look at that. That looks awesome. So let's put that paint aside for now. Let's give this a little spread on here. Oh, look at that. It actually looks like frosting. Wow. Ooh, that's really cool. It looks like it's spreading like frosting too. You can give your cakes this kind of texture if you want it to look kind of homemade. It doesn't have to be as smooth as I was making it earlier. It can have this almost like mousse-like quality to it. And I actually might even do that with this box. I don't know, we'll see. Well, I'm gonna turn off the camera because you probably don't want to see me doing this, so I'm gonna show you the end results. So, mm, look at this. This <laughs> looks like a real frosted cake. To me, that looks delicious, more so than the white ones that I did. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting the hang of this, but look at this yummy mousse-like consistency. It might be like more like a buttercream. It looks like homemade frosting. It's crazy. Anyways, I'm just gonna put that down like that. Yeah, I probably won't be sanding anything down because I really like this texture that it's giving off. So I'm assuming you're supposed to mix in a lot of paint, which I don't think I really mixed in a ton of the paint with the white. So maybe that's why it came out to the consistency that it did. Is this guy gonna fit on here? It will, but I think I might still Stick it down later when it's not so wet because I want to make a decision when it's actually dry but that would look really cool on top of the cake the only problem is is I want to put dollops on this larger cake dollops of icing then stick this down maybe I'll try to do this dollop of icing thing right now while things are drying and see how that turns out so I have these cherries these are the faux cherries they're quite large okay so first of all I need one of these guys I'm just going to push this down here to the end as much as I can. Find out what the tight squeeze is and then, yeah, so right here is where I can cut. So just bring that up a bit and just cut that part off. So I have this kind of kit. It has a whole bunch of different types of nibs for icing. This looks like something that I would probably use for here. And then this guy fits on here and then I just sort of screw that on like that. So if I wanted to, I can easily change out the head if I'm not really satisfied with this actual nib here. So I think that's really helpful. All right, I am just going to use this giant cup here to fill this up halfway. So if you fill it up too much, then the fake icing or any kind of icing will go out to the other side. So it's basically kind of like this, going over the other side like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, just scoop out the rest of this frosting that aside. I'll just take this out of here. Let's see. There, that looks so cute. Oh my god. Okay, so then... It looks kind of like a little homemade cake top. Oh, it is so cute. I just love it. This is adorable. I just want to fix up some little areas like this. Okay, and then put a little bit of those crayon shavings I did not too long ago. It smells like wax crayons, that's for sure. And then just sort of press them in a little bit. Try not to get your finger right in the icing. You don't want fingerprints and stuff, but you want it to sit inside the icing a little bit just so it gets in there and it doesn't fall out. If you want to, you can always spray it with a varnish when you're done to sort of set it as well. Here, I'll just stick a little extra shavings on here. I shouldn't look so stingy with my shavings. <laughs> 
There we go. That looks adorable and super delicious. And yeah, that's my little shavings, my faux chocolate shavings that I did. And I have that video down below for you guys. I didn't just do these shavings. I did some little curly ones, which I'm going to probably put on one of the white cakes too. So anyways, this looks really cute. And I think I'm going to keep going with some of the other cakes to make some of them look chocolatey as well. Okay, so I'm not going to move this really much because it's still drying and I don't want to wreck it or anything. But I did do a smaller cake top here. So I think I'm going to do just like a small little extra thing on the side here that I kind of wanted to do for a cupcake. But maybe I'll do that in, in another video. Oh, this is so much fun. I love this. So I got like a little tangerine slice. Just going to nestle it in there. Gonna get a couple little raspberries and just sort of push it in. And then I'm going to top it with what looks like a blueberry. I think this guy looks pretty good. Nestle that guy in there. Just try to press him in quite a bit too. Oh, it looks so cute. I love it. If you want to, you can even, not much left, but you can do like a little thing going on around here. If you want to, you don't have to do this at all. So it just looks like it's a lot of chocolate on top of this thing. I don't know. I don't mind all that texture. I probably could have done it a little fancier than that, but pretty much got through all this stuff here. It looks pretty good though. I'm pretty impressed with this. And I'll let these guys dry. Okay, so I'm gonna try something out. I kind of want to try doing something fancy around the border of this tiny little cake. So it's okay, it's not my favorite. And because of that, I actually might dress it a little bit. So we have these little things here. And I think I'm just going to sort of put them around. There we go. And it actually kind of looks cute. It looks like little whipped cream dollops. It's another thing you guys can do if you feel like you're not good at doing these kind of borders. You can sort of put little resin candies that I've purchased in there. Or you can even make those things yourself on some sort of wax paper. Peel it off or cut around depending on if it's peeling off the wax paper or not. But you can make little dollops with this kind of spackle if you're really good at doing that sort of thing. Whatever you'd like. But that's just an option for you guys too. So I'm going to try to finish some of these cakes off. Off. the chocolate ones anyways the white ones I'm gonna do at another time probably tomorrow so I'm probably just gonna decorate these guys so I'll do that and then I think I'm just gonna stick some of my M&Ms on here there you go that's pretty cute so I'm gonna do something over here I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here over here. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. Lord knows I'm not perfect at this. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to put a bunch of these fun Game Boy sprinkles all over this. I'm gonna put some other sprinkles on there as well. Yeah, you can definitely tell like an amateur made this one. <laughs> Not the best cake decorator in the world. I'm gonna have to get my nails in the frosting because this frosting here is still drying. So this is actually faux sprinkles that I purchased online. So don't worry guys. I'm not going to attract ants or anything with these sprinkles. So I might actually put this under a layer of Mod Podge. It sucks because I'm getting some sort of sprinkle holes as I'm trying to push them down. They're not really sticking tremendously well. But maybe if I put some sort of layer of Mod Podge on here, then they might stick a little. Yeah, I think that looks a little cuter. No, it doesn't look so plain. So there we go. That's the top. So a bunch of the cakes I'm done. I'm going to let them set overnight. And then I'm going to do some more stuff, hopefully with the white cakes. So I'm going to now focus on the white cakes here. So I did the wedding cakes. I lightly sanded the tops on some of these guys. Yeah, so you can paint the bottoms or even some parts of the sides. What you could also do to make the sides not look so obvious is you could always maybe pipe some sort of color along here it doesn't have to be a wedding cake which I'm gonna do but like you can pipe some sort of color along here and make it look like almost like glue two cake slices together and they have like a color of icing or jam or something like that around the side so you can always do that you could do it with some sort of puffy paint and go around the edge to make things easier instead of having to whip up a bunch of different color of icing so that's another alternative for you guys too so i'm gonna focus on the wedding cake a little bit later i'm waiting for some stuff in the mail basically with those but right now i'm going to sort of focus on these guys so they're actually these sprinkles are on there they're basically glued down because we pressed them in there i might have to touch things up with some 
some white paint, like stuff like this. But other than that, it's not too bad. But what I'm going to do right now is get a piping bag ready here. So I'm getting this ready off camera. Okay, I'm going to not fill this all the way up. Okay, so I got a lot in here. Like that. Move it down the line like that and then twist the bag around. Let's see if I can do a nice doll up. Yeah, I don't know if I like this tip that I've got. With this guy, I'm going to break out strawberry chocolate. You could do regular strawberries on here too. You don't have to dip them in the chocolate like I did. So let's try this. It's a nice creamy consistency. So I'm just gonna squish that in there and then I'm gonna take these guys these little chocolate curls or chocolate shavings this looks like a fancy cake I'm just gonna press them in there and nestle them in they're a little bit bendy so that's kind of cool so that's basically that one I'm gonna let that set before the next thing that I do and these guys let's see here I'm gonna get some jelly beans anything you want. You've got stuff like this. You can put more sprinkles on there. Whatever you want to do. So these are completely two different cakes. And so for the big ones, I'm just going to add jelly beans. And then I'll just add a few more These sprinkles just to top things off a bit. But yeah, that's quite the confetti cake here. I'm just gonna dump out a couple of those ones that are kind of looser. And I'm not quite done with this one yet, but we will top this a little bit more. So if you want to use the chocolate sauce, but you don't want to use the whole thing, you can stick it in just like some sort of squeeze bottle. This one has a lid, so this can contain things a little bit better. I think that's kind of like the nicest thing about it. But I think I'm going to just use this on top of here, just drizzle a little bit on. Mm, that's actually, mm, I don't know if I like that though, because it's gonna be a very different chocolate. So you know what? I'm actually going to try to find the chocolate sauce that I had. Yeah, so I'm going to use this chocolate sauce that I've been saving for a while. Oh no! These containers actually already have dye in them. Oh, that's not good. New plan. Let me see. So, okay, so don't use those particular things that I just showed you from the dollar store because they have dye in them. So, okay, so what you can do is you can cut off the end of this, but I kind of want to save stuff still. So what I might do is I might just open it up and just drizzle stuff on top in kind of an erratic pattern. You can do varying lines. It's just supposed to look like it's being drizzled on. You can drizzle things with a spoon. You can do so many different things. You may want to just drizzle it out with like a piping bag. This way is super messy, quite honestly. You can even go over top of the strawberries a bit more if you want to. That's perfectly fine. You can make zigzags on the strawberries. If you have a better piping system than I do, obviously my plan failed. <laughs> I got jars that don't really work. But if you can find some squeeze jars have lids like that that don't have dye in it that you have to wash out and all that. That's probably the best thing you can do. All the power to you there. But it still looks kind of like it's been drizzled on. So that's kind of the main thing that you are going for. I think that's as far as I'm going to go with that. And you can even add little big chocolate crumbles if you want to. I was actually thinking if you wanted to, you could put sponge around the side and that would look really, really cool too. I'm going to clean up and then I'm going to show you something else. So I'm doing a little bonus for you guys here. So I'm trying to make little little brownie boxes. I mean, I didn't cut it very well here, but I'm going to cover that up so hopefully it won't be that big of a deal. So yeah, it looks a lot like a brownie and you just open it up. It's like a little jewelry box like that. So what I did to make that part, because I'm not finished it as you can see, is so I have just like regular little jewelry box, like a tiny little jewelry box. I got these forever ago at a store, so I don't think I'm going to be able to link this sort of thing down below, but you can probably find a little tiny jewelry box anywhere. It doesn't matter what color or anything like that because you're going to cover it up anyways but if you can find something small and kind of rectangular then that works really well eventually in the end it will look like a larger brownie piece which is great so i took that and I, this i purchased online so you can get something like this online if you want to 
So I'm gonna take out this green one. The green one is the one I used. You can use any color you want, it doesn't really matter as long as you go over it well with the paint. So basically I take one of these, it's a little bit moist, I think they can dry it really easily so it's nice to cut when they're more damp I guess, or soft. Basically you take the lid or the bottom and you can try to draw with some sort of material but I feel like it's really up to you. I mean I guess we're gonna paint over it anyways, doesn't matter. But so if you draw around that it's fine. I basically just went right in there with an X-Acto knife and I didn't go all the way to the other side with the X-Acto knife. I just sort of made a mark so that I knew what size the box slid basically was. And then I was about the size of it or so. So you cut it in half and then I basically did the same sort of thing with like the box lid, cut around it and everything. And then I took some scissors and I just went right in there. You can do everything with an X-Acto knife if you want to. I just found the scissors a little easier just to get in there and just cut the interior. The interior is right out. So basically you have like tiny little sponges. You can do whatever you want with them. You can use them as regular sponges or you can use them as miniature brownies or something if you want to. If you don't want to make boxes with them, you can do lots of things with that. So I got this kind of idea from the pink tree, by the way, I should say. So she basically used stuff like this sponge material to make case slices, but she used like flower foam to make brownies. But I thought combining the cake tutorial and the brownie tutorial is kind of what I was hoping to do. So I find it easier to work with. So basically you can cut into this easily and you sort of stretch that around the box and I just glued it into place. Then I painted it. You can do one or two coats depending on how well you cover it the first time. So I did it with a burnt ember. I just really got in there with the brush because you can really see in the holes, you can see a lot of the green or whatever color your sponge is. It shows, right? So you just have to really stipple it in there. So basically did that and it actually fits together pretty well, which is really nice but I want to do something with the top obviously like I want to cover this part up I just want to cover this whole lid part I don't think I'm gonna to do too much with the bottom if you want to cover this up you can paint it or you can put some sort of paper or something as like a base whatever you'd like to do that's really your call but I want to basically just use the rest of the chocolate spackle that I used for these cakes so I'm just going to I'm hoping I can just easily spread this icing on top but yeah, this is what you can do with leftover chocolate if you have some leftover and if you have like a little box like this. And if you want to, you can tape things off if you don't want it to look too messy. I don't really care just because this thing's already kind of messy <laughs> looking. There you go, there's like a little iced brownie. If you want to, you can put little extra sprinkles on top, which I might do. It might make it look like those kind of galaxy brownies. Oh my God, those are so cute, I love them. But yeah, you can top this with whatever you want. You can make a s'mores brownie. I like my stuff colorful, you know me. I like colorful, cute stuff. So somebody might think you're offering them a brownie, but instead you're offering them a necklace. It's just cute. You can add little pearls in there if you want to. And there you go. And then I'm gonna let that dry, obviously, and I'll show you guys, but I might just put a little dollop of whipped cream on top and then add something else extra. So you don't have to do the Thing that I'm doing with the galaxy stuff at all. You don't even have to put sprinkles on it if you want it to look kind of classic. You can just leave it the way it was or you can even leave it the way it is right now. I'm adding more stuff to it. If you want to, you can even just do chocolate sauce, whipped cream, which is what I'm going to basically be doing right now. And if you want to, you can add this so it looks like a tiny little cherry or berry or something. And I've showed you this in another past video, but in case you didn't see that video already, I'm just going to explain this again. You can paint the stems green, cut them a little shorter to make them look like a tiny little cherry. You can actually put a big cherry on it too if you want to. Like I got the fake cherries in this video that you've already seen when I made the black forest cake. So I have that, but I'm not going to do that. Or again, you can stick that in as like a regular berry and you say you want to do a Christmas brownie or something like that. But I'm going to get these really cute cute stars and I'm going to do a dollop of whipped cream like that and then I'm taking a spoon and just sort of drizzling on the brownie to look kind of like chocolate sauce. So I got some cool drips going on here and then while this is still wet I'm just going to put a few adorable stars on top. There you go. So 
some really adorable candies happening on top. And you can do whatever you want. It could be hearts, it could be, as I said, you can do the cherry, you could do like a classic brownie look. You could do what the pink she has done. She decorated hers like a brownie yellow mode. So she did, and she shows you how to do kind of like a fake ice cream and then the whipped cream and then the cherry on top. I'm just doing something a little simpler, but also kind of extravagant, but there you go. I think that's a really fun and cute brownie. And I'm gonna set that aside to dry that you can give somebody. And the last thing I'm gonna do is my wedding cake, which I'm going to do when I get some of the stuff to make the wedding cake. I'll show you guys how to do that. You just have to wait for the delivery. <laughs> so here I created very simplistic wedding cake. You can go as elaborate or as large. Say you've got some nesting boxes that kind of stack on top of each other like this. It doesn't have to be this small. It could be larger or it could be this small, whatever you want to do. And you can decorate it however you want. It doesn't have to be this simple at all. I just sort of went with the simplicity of it. Basically, they're just sort of stacked on top of each other. I didn't paint the bottom yet, but I probably will later. You can put a little bit of Velcro on the bottom if you want to present it to somebody with a bit of sturdiness. I also just sort of did glue dots in basically the same spot. So like I sort of glued it down with the glue dot and then I overlapped it and then I put another glue dot down. It doesn't look like the glue dots are sticky enough to keep the ribbon in place. So I don't know if I'd recommend glue dots. If anything, maybe hot glue or something like that might secure it a little bit more. But I did want to leave a little bit of room. So these little flowers here, these are little hair clips and I just sort of stuck them in below where it opens in the little ribbon that I tied around. This is all that's left basically because it was a very small portion of it. I thought it was more than that, but I got a whole bunch of different rainbow colors on Amazon. So this was the white one. So I probably need to get some more white grow grain ribbon at some point, but you can get satin, organza, lace, whatever you want. If you want it to dress up something like this and you can stack it however you want. You can always glue on some flowers. If you've got fake flowers or foam flowers, I've got some foam flowers up here that I was going to use. So you can even glue something like this on. These are little boxes that I purchased online, but yeah, you can definitely glue something like this on. Those are like sticker flowers. They're made out of foam, those ones. You can definitely use all sorts of fake flowers, paper flowers. You don't even have to use flowers. You can use butterflies or whatever you like. You can use gems or pearls or whatever. I'm sure you could put on a cake topper and make like a little dollop of something with spackle. Place a little cake topper in there. I love these clips. They actually came like this together and I loved how wedding -y it looked. You can basically put it in your hair if you're either at a wedding like bridesmaids or like the bride. Whatever color scheme I guess the bride has. There's all different color schemes of these things. I just thought this looked very wedding -y, this kind of pink and white. I'll put the links down below to these if you guys are really interested in this. If you put these on a little gift and give it to somebody for their wedding, it's like giving them an extra gift with these little flower hair clips. That was kind of the idea behind that. I thought that that was kind of fun. So these things obviously are coming off. I just use craft glue dots and they're normally fairly sticky, but I think on fabric it's not exactly tremendously sticky. So that's why I'm saying hot glue. I just didn't want to deal with the strings of hot glue. And I wasn't sure how temporary this was going to be. I just wanted to show you guys like an idea of how to decorate a little box. You can put small items in here for somebody's wedding. You can make them a little honeymoon kit and put tiny travel size sunscreen or something like that, that you can get at a drugstore. Give them little things like that for something to look forward to after the wedding. You can give them gift cards in here. If you make it a bigger cake, so you stack up the bigger cake boxes, you could probably get a lot more stuff in there as well. So you can also use the little white flakes that I use. You can crush them up, but even more, you can make like a coconut cake. And so it'd be like white on white wedding cake. You can make it as fancy or as traditional or whatever as you want. You can even do something with sponge and just sort of brush a little bit of the white spackle on it to make it look almost like a naked cake. There is a plethora of things you can do with these boxes. I think that they're really, really fun. I love that I did this as a bonus. I was going to do like a separate video for something like this, but I think that this is absolutely adorable. I love how it dries. There's like a little tiny drip that came down here. Luckily it didn't cover the opening of the box, but I just think it's so cute when you put it together. To me, this looks like a real, a real brownie. <laughs> you can sort of see that it has a bit of an opening, but from far away, you can't really tell. It just looks like a regular brownie. Like, I want to eat this thing. I don't know about you guys, but I want to eat this thing. So, and I think it, it just turned out so cute. So I really love the bonus brownie that I made, but I mean, I also love, look, all these cakes. And obviously I have so many different types of sprinkles and things for different occasions. Left over, I can use and do different types of cakes like this, but 
but I hope I gave you guys a ton of different ideas. Obviously, I got some cutesy stuff and there's like some traditional, more classy styles that I decided to do. This guy, to me, I looked at it after I did it and I was like, it kind of looks a little like pumpkin pie. It's a very simple looking one and I mean, I could probably put some sort of like happy birthday script or something on there if I was really good with fonts. But you know, you could do something really cool with that as well and dress it up even further or you could just leave it simple because sometimes people just love simple classic designs like that, right? But yeah, I think these big ones are just so fun. Yeah, that's pretty much that and I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm probably just going to do a little montage showing you guys stuff you can put in these cakes. boxes. Aren't they cute? I really love a lot of these guys. This one's probably one of my favorites, honestly, even though it kind of looks like a bit of a mess and the drizzling process wasn't as professional as I wanted it to be, but I think it could have looked really, really cute if I squeezed it out of something and had a little bit more control with it, but it still looks really cute and edible. I'm kidding. I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> I just sort of put some random stuff in, stuff that I've made on my DIY channel and stuff that I just think is really cute and fun. This kind of looks like a Valentine's Day present to give somebody. And I guess this could be very Valentine's Day. I feel like the strawberry shortcake. But yeah, I just put some really cute things in there. I just stuffed some tissue in it and I think it looks so cute. Just like a really fun presentation for gifting a few little things to somebody. I'm really excited to be giving these out to people. Hopefully people like this stuff. And my brothers both, and I think my husband too, are really into Black Forest cakes. So I decided to do some little chocolate shavings. They're actually not coming off really. And I'm gonna like spray them with, there's like a Mod Podge coming in the mail that's like a spray. I haven't received it quite yet, but it's coming tomorrow I think. Mod Podge as you know is like a glue and sealer in one. So I'm just going to spray it on top and seal this in with like a that spray so yeah, hopefully that's going to keep a lot of the sprinkles and shavings and whatnot in there but yeah like these guys are you can't do that with a real cake like they're not coming off which is awesome like I really tried to get things in there I haven't painted the bottom of these yet either but that's something I could potentially do later it's not that big of a deal they're just adorable I mean I was thinking I was like oh maybe I should have put some guy bears or something like that on here there's so many different candies and stuff that I have that you could pop on this and I just absolutely love them I feel like this one turned out very homemade like very homemade but it's still cute and I mean if you want to if you're really good with decorating stuff you know you could do something fancy down below to just make the whole box look like a cake as I said before this one is very simple this cake but it kind of looks it looks like a cake too but it kind of to me from the top very much looks like pumpkin pie I love the M&Ms I think they're really cute again you can add extra stuff to it you can add sprinkles or whatever to make it even more fun you can make these as simple or as elaborate as you want this one could have been a cupcake if I kept going and making more of this, like an actual big swirl. It's like very textured, which is really cool. And I'm surprised how quickly these dried. I just sort of like left them overnight and they were hard the next day. So this, I mean, you can stack it however you want, arrange these flowers however you want. It looks really simple, really elegant, really pretty. And to me, it looks very simple and wedding-y. And obviously, I don't know, I kind of love how this turned out. This little bonus thing is big enough to be a brownie. And it's like a perfect little jewelry box. 
box. You can put rings in here. You can put necklaces in here like I did. There's so many different things you can put in there that are small, not just jewelry, I'm sure. Yeah, so it's, I don't know. I really, really liked making this stuff. I thought it was really, really cute. I don't really have a lot of cupcake or cake things, so I just wore this little cupcake necklace. That's what I wanted to do to be a little on theme. I wore something a little bit rainbowy, I guess, today. Yeah, I really enjoyed making this stuff. And as I said, it looks really cute as home decor if you give it to somebody. The wedding box, it would be a nice keepsake box if you could make it come apart fairly easily. Somebody can totally disassemble that or they can make their own style, sort of elaborate on it if they want to. They could even make little extra boxes to gift somebody, reuse them that way. There's lots of really, really cute things you can do with these boxes. But yeah, I had a lot of fun making these guys and not edible. Hopefully you're not gifting it to a really small child that's like, ooh, you know. I think a lot of them turned out really realistic looking, really, really cute. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed spending time with me today. And I hope you guys really enjoyed the final reveal of the cakes. And yeah, this is basically what the whole series was adding up to. So if you guys are new to this channel, welcome. If you guys are returning to my channel and you are already subscribers, thank you again so much for being here. I always appreciate you guys. Please like, subscribe, and share the video if you can. I hope everybody's having a good, healthy, safe time. Okay? Take care, guys. Bye!